Hello, hello, you are watching The Choice of a Young Voice. This is the series where we talk about the different choices we make as young people and we get encouraged to make better choices each and every day. One particular choice we are talking about today is business matters. How many young people own businesses, you know? We go to school each and every, you know, day. We know that we have to go to school to study. And once we are done, we go job hunting. That's what we know. That's what we are taught. But is it important for us as young people to actually start businesses today? And that is exactly what we'll, we will be discussing. Today with me, right here, I have important people. <clears throat> I am going to introduce them shortly very important people who will help us understand why business is important in our society today so right here we have beth kidenda she's a lovely person woman of god she loves god with all her heart that i know for sure she's also my good friend and she's here today to inspire us you know she also owns a, a small business that yes. she started uh, recently yes. and she's she's very passionate about education we're going to hear more from her we also have dr andrew nyakundi who is a lecturer and teaches business and entrepreneurship and he also does farming so we'll learn more about him and what he does right here we are with us people smile smile at me yes we have a lovely audience a lovely audience here ready to learn eager to ask questions challenging questions for our guests to you know let's for us to all just have a very interactive moment mm -hmm. so let's begin why do we need to own businesses as young people I mean, dr nyakundi help us understand yeah it's very important for young people to own business one you are creating employment for yourself. And when you do that, it's not only for yourself, others can also benefit from that business which you have. Two is a source of income for you. Of course, if you don't have money, then you will have all the problems, you can't solve anything. So it's a source of income to you and also to the community where you are coming from. Three, you need to be your own boss. You know this idea of getting employed and now everything you are doing, you are confined, mm -hmm. then you cannot make even a decision of your own. Mm -hmm. But when you own business, you make decisions, some very quickly and then you move forward. Mm -hmm. Like now you can make a decision at night what you want to do tomorrow. But in formal, where you are employed, you don't make that kind of decision. You don't have that kind of freedom to do that. Mm. Three, you need to contribute to the economy mm -hmm. where you are coming from and also for the country. You need to be productive and that's how you can. So through business, you can be able to do all those. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, thank you for, for those um, insights. Beth, you, you own a business. Maybe you can tell us what it is and what inspired you to start it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, I appreciate very much the angle that you've shared. And I think um, all that resonates very strongly with me. Um, and also I'd like to add about purpose. Mm -hmm. What is your purpose? What do you feel like God has put you on this earth to do? What contribution do you want to make to your economy and also to other people? Mm -hmm. And for me and my co-founder Debbie, when we're thinking about what business we would like to start, what we wanted to do was to encourage young ladies that you can look nice, you can dress well, mm -hmm. you can be stylish, but still glorify God in your dressing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was our, that was our why, why we wanted to start this. And then we thought about how can we do this? How can we share this message? And how can we empower other young women mm -hmm. to be able to glorify 
God in their dressing as well. So we decided to start a skirts business. Mm -hmm. So we actually sell skirts. Uh, we champion what is called nowadays on the interwebs modest fashion. Mm. So we sell skirts and of course they don't go above the knee. That is one thing that we talk about. But we do it, we enjoy it. Mm. Through this we have been able to even bring in one person hire uh, a lady and now we are mentoring her and growing her in the business to one day also be able to start something of, our, of her own. Mm -hmm. So it's a question of purpose, it's a question of what contribution do you want to make and also how do you want to be able to engage others and grow together. Yeah. And I think uh, you, you, you mentioned purpose. Mm -hmm. How then does one know their purpose? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's very important because I've talked about um, 844 system, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you go to school, mm -hmm. you study, mm -hmm. then you just want to get a job. When you don't have a job, you continue looking for a job. Yeah. And look, how, how can one get that motivation to, to start a business? Mm -hmm. Dr. Nyakundi? Yeah. <clears throat> one, one thing that... Um, <clears throat> which you need to come out clear, especially mm -hmm. when you're focusing your purpose. If you don't really have your purpose, you don't know, you don't know your purpose, then all the things you'll be doing, you, it will not take you anywhere. Mm -hmm. So one thing that you need to do is um, <coughs> you start to practice. Mm -hmm. Anything that you are having passion in, you can turn it into business. Mm -hmm. So that you need to know what is it that you love to do. Mm -hmm. When you get to know it, then turn it into business. Mm. And of course, we are not in this world by chance. Mm -hmm. God created us and there is a purpose for that creation that we are existing. Mm -hmm. So you need really to know what is expected of you from God mm -hmm. and what do you really want to do before you leave this world mm -hmm. on your own. Mm -hmm. All those things need to be very clear. Mm -hmm. And when they are clear, then now you can strive for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, th that's very true. Um, but I feel like there are people, maybe like me, who think, ah, I don't think I have that business mind. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the passion, maybe you, there's something you like to do, but how is, how can I turn it into a business? I, I don't, how will I generate income from this? There are people who, they, they say what, the stereotype Kikuyus, mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to be very business minded. Anywhere they go, they just start a business. They're uh -huh. doing, in my family, my mom is very business oriented. My sister, myself, I, I try, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I feel like I, I may not have that business drive. Mm -hmm. So for someone who feels that way, what, 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 what would you say, Beth? Mm -hmm. I think um, sometimes when we can't find inspiration within ourselves, mm -hmm. we need to look outside, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's very difficult for you to get to that point where you, because maybe the need is not there urgently. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you can't find inspiration within yourself, look outside. Go out and seek out people who you admire. So mm -hmm. you say your mom is, uh, is very good at business. Have you ever mm -hmm. sat down with her and said, you know, mom, I, I really think I'm not good at this thing. Mm -hmm. how, how, did you, how did you nurture that in mm -hmm. yourself? Sit down with somebody else who's started a business. The, role of mentorship is very important in shortening our learning curve as young people. If you look to somebody who has done it before, who has made the mistakes and can share with you lessons that they've learned, then they're able to drive you mm. on a journey based off of their experiences. Mm -hmm. Another thing when you're looking for your passion is to think about what disturbs you the most. Mm. What do you care about? What problem in this world mm. just m gives you sleepless nights? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's another way to find purpose and see what do you want to solve. So Carol mentioned that I'm very passionate about education and I work in that space. For me, it pains me to see young people who are not able to access education. Mm -hmm. And I've turned that into my life's work. Mm -hmm. 
So everywhere I go, even when I'm looking for a job, I'm very strategic. Mm -hmm. This is the sector in which I want to contribute. This is the sector I want to give my services. Mm -hmm. So being very specific and always remembering that there's always other people you can learn from. Yeah, mm. you can read a book, you can learn from someone's story, but you can also just approach somebody and say, Hey, mm. I really want to start a business, but I don't know the first thing about how. Mm. Always ask, and if you ask, you'll be surprised what you'll get. Amen. Yeah, man, thank you. Uh, uh Dr. Nyakundi, you teach, right? Uh, entrepreneurship. Yeah. Yes, uh, all these students you teach, do, do they someday want to own businesses or? or they, they just want to learn more about it. Because I, I, I don't know, maybe it's just my own feeling. Most people who just go to school, what, <laughs> go to school in order to get a job. How is it that in the education, is there something in the education sector that actually makes students become more innovative? So that once they get out, they start, you know, reaching out for their passions and starting businesses. Is there something like that in the education sector? Yeah. Uh, actually, when I teach, mm -hmm. what I tell the student is that this idea of finishing and looking for employment should come out of your mind. Mm -hmm. I want you, when you finish your program, mm -hmm. think what you can do on your own. Uh, when I look at the programs in the universe now, they are incorporating mm -hmm. uh, programs like small, medium enterprises. Mm -hmm. So those prog programs, they bring in ideas like innovation, mm -hmm. that before you think of anything, be innovative. Don't be doing the same thing always. Be mm -hmm. thinking on how you can do something. So I tell them, before you graduate, you should be having a business idea in you. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? In fact, sometimes I challenge them and say, can I see your business plan? Mm -hmm. Let me see where I teach about the business plan. Like, can I see what you are thinking you want to do? Mm -hmm. Because business is all about solving existing problem. Mm -hmm. So if you are able to see a problem, mm -hmm. then find the ways of solving that problem. Mm. That means you generate ideas, very many gen ideas. Then you start screening. Okay, out of all these ideas, I think this, if I use this one, mm. can't be able to address the existing problem. Mm -hmm. So that is the kind of uh, knowledge I'm passing over to the young people because I know every year we are having our people graduating mm. almost around 150,000 because right now we have about 74 universities, mm. an average of 2,000 are graduating. Then, in every year, we are sending about 150,000 mm. students to the job market. Mm. And then that job is not there. Look at the creation rates of jobs in Kenya mm. in former sector. The government says about 500,000 every year. But how many do we have? There are too many. So they should be able to come out of the university knowing mm. there is no a job they are going to get. They are not going to be employed. Therefore, they should think on how to create their own mm -hmm. jobs after graduation. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for that. Um, one of the challenges I believe we, we have as young, we face as young people is the factor of, you know, security. Mm -hmm. Business, sometimes you don't have a secure, you know, every month I'm going to be getting this amount and it can be very risky. And so why, how, how can a young person be able to take that risk and s with the mindset that I need to have security? Mm -hmm. If you are to create wealth, you must step out of comfort, comfort zone. You have mm -hmm. to come out of comfort zone. And those who have done that, they have managed to create wealth. Mm -hmm. Therefore, risk, you cannot avoid it you have to take risk. Mm. If you try to avoid the risk, then you will not try anything because you'll be feeling that this is not going to work. Mm. But have a positive mind. In fact, the entrepreneur, entrepreneur has to have a positive mind that whatever I'm going to do is going to work. Even if it doesn't work, mm. 
then you have learned that way mm -hmm. is not the best. You can now adopt to another, mm. another way of doing the same thing. But mm. the giving up is not an option mm. for an entrepreneur. Beth, yeah, I'll say when we learned about entrepreneurship in doing business studies in high school, one of the characteristics of an entrepreneur was always that you have to be a risk taker. Mm. But an entrepreneur is not somebody who takes careless risks. Mm. Yeah. So if you want to start a business, you have to be very strategic. Yeah. Mm. So you don't just say, you know what, I'm, I want to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to quit my job today. Let me go out in the world, look for <laughs> a business to start. Before you quit that job, have a plan. Yeah. Mm. So what is your plan? What is your entry strategy into the market that you're trying to take over? Yeah. Mm. So he is a, a, a business lecturer and he is one of the people who you can approach potentially to say, you know what, I'm thinking of starting a business. How do I need to set up? Yeah. Mm. So what are you going to do first? Where are you going to get your starting capital? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you going to make sure that you have return on investment? Mm -hmm. Are you able to articulate your plan so well that if you pitch it to a potential investor in your business, they're going to say, this person knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I feel like I can put in my resources into this with a promise of a return. So I think mm -hmm. as you think about entrepreneurship, you also need to think about sharpening your mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to think about being very strategic as at everything you do. Mm. Always have a plan. The God we serve is a God of order. Yeah. That's why you see the way he created this world, day one, mm -hmm. day two, day three, to make sure that by the last day when he created human beings, everything was ready for us to just chill, okay? Mm. So even as an entrepreneur, as you think about going in there, what is your plan? Mm. Such that when you launch, everything is ready for you to just Chill. Chill. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, there's a young gentleman we interviewed who owns a business. And let's just take a look at some of the things he told us about, you know, some of the challenges he faces and how he has benefited b from the business that he owns. Take a look at this. We'll be right back. Uh, my name is Okea Gomari. I'm 32 years old. I'm an engineer by profession, but I'm a business owner. I operate a business in the transport world. I do transport trucking, transport cargo from Mombasa to Kampala. I, the reason why I started a business at a young age, I started business at 25 immediately after college, is because I like the biz business mechanics and operations. I've always wanted to do business, that's number one. But two, is because of the freedom and control that I get in business. I'm able to control my time. So how much I can make, the kind of impact that I can do will only depend on myself, no one else. I'm the one to encourage myself to set my own goals and to aspire, so I'm not controlled by anyone. What I say about business, starting business at a young age, most people want to start business as a plan B because they cannot get a job. I, dis I, I, I made it a deliberate decision to go into business immediately after college. I had decided way before I finished school that I'll do business. Uh, so I'd want to encourage uh, everyone, the young people out there, that business is a good way to go. One, you solve a big problem, which is unemployment. Number two, you get a certain level of control in terms of time and ambition. You, as, you set your own goals. Uh, in whatever way you want to do. So I do encourage people. And lastly, and which is most important, and the mo m motivation that I get in business is what every day when I wake up, I work for myself. So everything I'm making will be inherited by my children. No child of mine can inherit my job, but they can in inherit the work of my hands right now. The, the first uh, challenge I got is because I, didn't, I don't come from an, an entrepreneurial background. So I didn't have a place where I was starting from. I started from scratch. I started by making so many mistakes. I made so many mistakes. So it took me a long while, about two years, just to pick up. Um, that's the first challenge I got. Pull, pulling resources together is a skill. It's something that will go on. There's nothing like I don't have capital. Everybody doesn't have capital. Even me right now, I don't have capital. But it's a skill you gain as you go. So. That was a challenge. I didn't have that skill, but I had to learn. 
how to pull resources together and also how to put the operations and business mechanics, how to deal with clients, how to deal with uh, employees. That is something that I came to learn with time. So those are the challenges I got. But the, what helped me is because I had already decided and I had a positive attitude towards business. Yes. Welcome back. We have just watched a video of a young man who owns a business and he's talked about different challenges that he he faced and how business has been very beneficial to him so let's let's talk about that um dr nyakundi what what do you think of the video we've just watched i think it's, a, it's very encouraging because you can see <clears throat> despite of uh, the challenges he was having mm. he kept on moving mm -hmm. he had a lot of failures the way he has said mm -hmm. but he did not give up and that's the good spirit we need to have. Mm -hmm. That even if you fail, it doesn't mean you stop, you quit. You have to continue. Mm -hmm. Challenges will continue being there, but then you find a way of solving those challenges as you go. Mm -hmm. Secondly, <clears throat> you need to be your own boss, the way you are said. Mm -hmm. You know that freedom where you can make decisions, you can now set even your goals, then you follow those goals on your own. And then what you get, the return mm -hmm. of your work, you are not going to share with anybody. Mm -hmm. It's your own. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. That's your own. And then education, the formal, formal, formal employment mm -hmm. cannot be needed by your children. But then the, what he has now created mm -hmm. can as well be inherited. Then this sort of being the problem with unemployment. If you can, you can have, say, a hundred of this kind of people. Mm. Then imagine each is employing, say, a hundred. How many jobs do you think you would have created? So many. Yeah. So if you can have that kind of thinking, then an employment problem we are having is not going to be as serious as it is now. Mm. Uh, the challenges of finance, yes you would be having them. Mm. But that's not all. Mm -hmm. If you have an idea, if you have an idea and a clear idea which you have recognized as an mm -hmm. opportunity, then you can get, you can get a capital. Mm. There are so many ways of raising capital. We have means of raising the, f the, the, fin uh, the, the funds that you need. One, you can, if you have a very nice idea, you can come to Betty and say, Betty, I have this idea, I look at it, I look at your business plan and say, it is viable, can you borrow me some money? Mm -hmm. I'm more than willing to put some money where I know the idea is going to work. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the government has got some provisions of assisting, but you have to prove and give evidence that what you want to start is going to be viable. Mm -hmm. We have youth funds, in Kenya and we have other people who are willing to assist as long as you are determined. Mm. That's very important. Thank you so much. Beth, what, what do you think from the video we've, we've just watched? Yeah, I've, I think I'll echo what um, he shared about uh, looking at, at challenges as learning opportunities. Mm. I think one thing that our education system has and for fear of being criticized, I'll say has gotten wrong, is not teaching children that making mistakes are learning opportunities. Mm. Yeah? So when you make a mistake, you know exactly what not to do the next time. Yeah? Mm. So you'll never do it again. Yeah? So we need to teach young people from an early age that when you make a mistake, be sure to draw a lesson from it. Mm. Yeah? So I've made many mistakes in my life, but now that I'm older, I'm like, wow. All those mistakes that I made right now have made me so much wiser, so much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another thing that will always keep you going on your entrepreneurship journey is your passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I heard Omari speak, I can tell that even while he was at college, he knew his true north, his north star. He was like, mm -hmm. I want to start a business and I want to leave a legacy for my children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So having that kind of clarity. And that clarity only comes from God, yeah? Mm. You need to pray over your plans because God is the only one who can confirm and tell you, yes, 
this is the way you need to go or no, you need to consider this other path. So really looking for clarity, really praying over what you believe is your purpose and what you are being called to do. Mm. Another thing he said that really struck me was that pooling resources was a skill that he needed to learn over time. Yeah. So that reminds me that at the beginning of your entrepreneurship journey, you will not have all the skills that you need. But you need to adopt that mindset mm -hmm. that this is a journey on which I am looking to learn, mm -hmm. I am looking to grow, and I am looking to build skills. So always look at every opportunity that comes as a learning journey. Always make sure that you have clarity and always make sure that you look at every mistake yeah. that you make as a learning opportunity. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. My lovely audience right here. Um, maybe some of you might have your own opinions or maybe a question, your own experience that you'd like to share with us. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Yes, please. Okay, I'm Jessica from Kisumu. Uh, I've heard what the business owner said. Mm -hmm. I myself have started a small business of mat weaving. Mm -hmm. I, apart from financial problems, uh, where to put the business, there's another problem that I do have. Because mm -hmm. you know, mat weaving is art. Mm -hmm. You do things, you use, you use different materials, you be creative, and you know, definitely it won't be something that is cheap. Mm -hmm. It's my passion, it's something that I really wanted to, to do for a long time though I started it recently. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the fact that I don't have somewhere a particular place to do the business, I find customers through the phone. Mm -hmm. In fact, I didn't, I didn't even want to start it as a business. I started making my own mats, door mats. Then my friends were like, hey, Jessica, can you please make us some? Eh? Mm -hmm. You see, that is how I started. Mm -hmm. And now I realized, oh, so I can do this as a mm -hmm. business. So when that friend of mine goes, I do the mat, then another friend of his or her sees, mm -hmm. requests. But that person will be like, ah, it's too expensive. No, I can't do that. Because if, if you're, you're, you're selling it like 1500 and if I go to Kibuyel, have I'll have a particular mm -hmm. match at 200 shillings. Mm -hmm. You see now when somebody tells me that, it discourages me. So I'm like, mm. I'm putting more effort in doing this thing, but people are like, you are too expensive. But in mm. real sense, whatever I used to do their maths, they are the ones that are expensive. So what I charge is labor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it has discouraged me for some time. So mm -hmm. how can you help me? Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. Yeah. And just before I, I, I hand it over to you also to share, um, I'd say that when you're starting a business, um, one thing that is always important is benchmarking. Yeah. So mm -hmm. looking at other people who are doing the same thing as you and always trying to see, to learn from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To shorten your learning curve and see what challenges they have experienced that you can overcome. Mm -hmm. The second thing I'll say is you need to know your worth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you need to be able to communicate and articulate that worth to other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So your messaging out there needs to be that whatever you're selling is of quality, yeah? Mm -hmm. You need to also be able to really stand your ground when things like that happen. Because whatever you do, whether it's business, working in an office, or just sitting at home, mm -hmm. there will always be people who are ready to criticize you. Mm -hmm. You need to turn that criticism into fuel and motivation, mm -hmm. yeah? How can I show these people that my maths are more durable? Yeah? How can I show them that the material quality that I use is superior? Mm -hmm. yeah? So maybe think about every time you speak to a customer, you share with them your journey of how you come up with that mat, what, where you source your materials from. Mm -hmm. Be able to share and articulate your competitive advantage. Why is this mat better than the mat you will get somewhere else for 200 shillings? Mm -hmm. Why will your mat last longer? Yeah, mm -hmm. be very particular about communicating the value proposition for your product and making sure that all the customers you engage with know that and never be discouraged. Always turn that criticism into fuel to say, I need to do better. 
I want to make this customer happy. Mm -hmm. Always look at them as somebody whose life you want to change. Mm -hmm. I want to make your home more beautiful with this mat. Never get angry at them because the nature of customers is they always want the best. But sometimes they don't even know the best even if it's in their hands. Mm -hmm. It is you, your job as their supplier to communicate that value to them. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yes. just to compliment what Peter said, you differentiate your products. Mm -hmm. mm. The moment you do that, then people can know why you are charging that, that, mm. that, that much. And of course, people want to get value of the money. Mm. Therefore, the, when people criticize you, then they are making you a better person. Yeah. Because all that you are doing, you are, going to, you are going back to think how best can you place your product in the market. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm also learning a lot here. Um, seated here as a host, I even feel like I should just keep quiet, sit <laughs> right there, and please continue talking. I want to learn more. Any other question or comment? Um, yes, behind there. Okay, I'm Josh from Kisumu. I have two questions. One is, are there some kinds of businesses we need to do as Christians? Because... Um, I have a friend who started a certain business, but I think like he went overboard because he started a wine and spirit business oh, wow. and he's a Christian. <laughs> uh, the second question, mm. so many youths are out there and they have good ideas to start a business, but they're facing another challenge is um, with their parents. You find that you have a business idea, you go to your parent and you tell your parent, hey, dad and mom, I want to do this. And like, no, we want you to be employed. Mm -hmm. So how can you tackle that? But your passion is to start a business and you have a purpose and you know, you love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. Nyakundi. Yeah. <laughs> yes, um, as a Christian, you, 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 you really need to understand why you are a Christian. The things you can do as a Christian and mm -hmm. things you cannot do as a Christian. A Christian is not expected to happen in a shop and then you start selling things like uh, tobacco or the wines you're saying because that will be going against your belief. Mm. We believe what God says. And he has given us in the, in the scripture saying these are the things that you need to do. So if there is anything that you, you think is not right, then as a Christian you should not do business in it. Mm. as a Christian. Two, <coughs> in uh, a situation where you are getting challenges from your parents saying, we want you to be employed and you want to do business. I want to just quote um, uh, one of a uh, business guru called Lavo. Mm. Him, he wanted to do business the same way you have said. But the parents want him to go to school. Mm -hmm. But say no, I want to do business to assist you and also assist myself. Fine, he went to school, but then the idea of business remained in him. Mm -hmm. As we are talking, he's, a, he's, he's one of the serious business person people we are having in Kenya, making a lot of money. Despite that mm -hmm. he went, he did what uh, the parents wanted, yeah. but he went again, did his own business mm -hmm. as by the idea he had initially. Therefore, my advice is getting employed is good, but is it there? It is not there. Mm. If it's not there, you can even challenge your parents and ask, yes, you want me to be employed. Where is the employment? <laughs> you know, at that point, they will keep quiet. They will not even tell you anything. Because you say, yes, I, I'm willing. I have the papers, I have all that is quiet. But where is employment? Mm. So at that point, then you tell them, me, let me do business. They can agree with you. Because they, if they don't, have a, they don't give you an, an alternative, then your alternative stands. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man, thank you. Yeah. And just to echo what he said on the first question, which was on your friend who is running a business that isn't really in line with his beliefs. I think you always need to, in whatever you do, whether you're running a business, whether you're mm -hmm. just talking, hanging out with friends, remember who you are. Mm -hmm. Remember the values that you hold dear. Remember 
the calling of Christ on your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And think about is what I'm doing helping me grow? Is what I'm doing helping the other person grow? Mm -hmm. When you're starting a business, you are looking to better and improve the lives of others. Think about what you're doing. Am I contributing to their harm and detriment mm -hmm. or am I adding value to their life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would challenge you to, you know, as Christians, we shouldn't be pointing fingers and criticizing. Yeah. So don't go and tell him, you know, I went on this show. They told me that I should tell you that you're going against your values. Close down this business immediately. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's a way in which you can approach this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a way people learn better when they're allowed to discover lessons for themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, when you're sitting down with him, spark conversation about your values, what you believe in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are your plans for growth as Christians? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that are affecting our youth now that are taking them away from the church? Mm -hmm. Tell him things that will make him think for himself and say, you know what? I'm actually not contributing to mm -hmm. the betterment of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So always remember that when you're when you're going to criticize some. Try and help them learn the lesson for themselves. Yeah, mm. you know, share share quotes, share scripture, but not those ones which are uh, a very big hint. Man opens liquor store and is a Christian. An article. <laughs> yeah, try and be as as diplomatic as you can when you are yeah. sharing things. Yeah? yeah. The second challenge was with your parents. The Bible calls us to honor our mother and father. Mm. So in everything that you do, always have your first priority as to honor them because they are the earthly parents that we have been given by God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't say that, you know what, me, I'm, I'm sure about what I'm doing and I'm not going to listen to you. Sometimes love is about compromise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So are you able to do your business on the side while fulfilling the requirements of your parents of, you know, trying out the job sector and seeing if it works for you? Yeah, mm -hmm. your, your parents love you and they always want to, they're, they're adults and they'll want to, you know, have a conversation with you. So sit down with them like an adult, yeah, and tell them, okay, let's, let's maybe try something. Let me try employment while running my business. Let's see how both are moving. Let's see which one is working better for me. Bargain with them. You know, when you sit down with your parents and tell them something that is very adult, like sometimes they can be like, eh. <laughs> this child is so smart, you know, <laughs> and probably they live and let you do what you want. Mm. So just the way you have to communicate your business idea to a potential client, communicate it to your parents mm. in a way that they see, wow, this mm. person, don't just tell them, I want to start a business. <laughs> They'll be like, so what? We want you to work. Yeah? yeah. So be able to really dialogue with them and bring them to that point of mm. common and shared understanding. Yeah. Okay. So I, I have a question, but I, I don't want to cut out anyone here else who has a question. So, okay, this one. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you so much. I'm Norman from Kisumu. Uh, doc, Dr. Nyakundi just shared with us that uh, approximately 150,000 uh, people graduate every year and they're out there mm -hmm. maybe seeking employment. And uh, one of the ways you've told us to source for funds is maybe through the youth funds and maybe approach a relative, mm -hmm. maybe a friend. And you'll find that if all these people out there, you know, every year there are a lot of youths outside here mm -hmm. who maybe want to start a business and they have good ideas. Mm -hmm. But when you go to the maybe county offices to apply for this youth fund, uh, there is a delay or they'll just maybe tell you some stories before it become it, it's uh, it's released to you mm -hmm. and when you go to even a relative also maybe somebody you trust somebody will tell you okay come this date when you go this date is postpone postpone it again so maybe i'm just wondering th there's a challenge mm -hmm. and it's in, in form of even fear mm -hmm. the youths have good ideas outside here mm -hmm. but now starting this business okay they say that maybe i want to own a company i want to start this kind of business but Maybe I'll need something like maybe a million, maybe uh, 500,000, maybe 10,000. So, doctor, maybe you can just tell us how much money uh, can someone start with a business? Does it have to be that much high or maybe this low? How? So that this fear can just mm -hmm. get out there. Maybe somebody has a nice idea, but when he thinks of 
maybe we should be having this kind of amount to study it. It just goes like that and he gives up or she gives up. Maybe you can give us um, an insight. You, you're going to answer that question right now. In fact, um, the both of you will answer that question as your closing remarks. Mm -hmm. So we'll be right back. So stay with us so that you can also hear the answer to this question. Welcome back. You are still watching The Choice of a Young Voice. Um, we just had a question from the audience that Dr. Nyakundi and Beth are going to answer at this point. Dr. Nyakundi? Yeah, thank you, brother, for that question. To start with, you don't need a, a lot of money to start a business. You can start small and grow your business. Mm -hmm. The second thing that you can do of course, you have applied for some funds and it's laying to come. But still, you can accumulate your own saving in a small way. It can take you even one, one year. Then you get somewhere mm -hmm. and they start a business. Do you know how you can do this? You can now start doing some small, small work mm -hmm. and save. Just you can save even half. When you go and do some Kibarua somewhere, mm. get 200, save 100. Knowing what you want to do in the next one year or so. Mm -hmm. So your own saving can assist you to start a small business. You don't have to have a, a certain figure in mind mm. to start a business. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Beth? All right. So I'll just add on to that and say that your vision will drive you. Where you want to go will drive you. So if you know exactly where you want to be, you'll say, to get there, mm. I need to do A, B, C. And to do A, B, C, I need to do E, F, G. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So businesses are different. Yeah? There are those that will require very high investment at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And for those, you will have to go out. You will have to network. You will have to be persistent. Yeah? In the Bible, there's the story of the persistent lady yeah mm. there's a reason why that was included in the bible god is trying to teach us that when you're persistent when you work at something constantly it will bear results yeah the second thing is as he said don't be afraid to start small when me and my friend debbie were starting our business we didn't have any investor any capital so what we did we just put together money that we had we went to the market we bought a few skirts we didn't have a shop we opened a whatsapp group we sent out the link to our friends and said, hey, please send this link to people. Tell all the girls you know to join it. We'll be posting skirts today at 7 p.m. Mm. By 3 p.m., there was about 150 people in that group. Mm. We posted the skirts and all of them went in the first day. How much did it cost us to do that? Zero shillings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our marketing was just sending a message. So all we used is data bundles and the money that we put together. So challenge yourself yeah mm -hmm. you need to be to be an entrepreneur you need to be a problem solver so mm -hmm. if you have this problem don't depend on someone else to solve it for you mm -hmm. ask yourself how can i solve this problem how can i solve this problem of not having a shop to sell my skirts i could use the internet yeah mm -hmm. i could use whatsapp so always challenge yourself say, look for the solutions to your problem within and i say and i will repeat always involve God in your plans. Ask him to reveal these things to you. Ask him to bless you. I was just sharing with Carol this morning that mm. some things we don't have because we don't ask. Yeah, We say, God, mm. help me to start a business, but you don't ask him for what you need to start that business. Yeah, mm. If you want God to make moves in your life, you have to make a move. Mm. Okay. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. <laughs> I have been blessed as well. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I do hope and believe that you have learned so much. And yes, get up and start a business. But like we learned, have a plan. <laughs> yeah. Have a plan and ask God to guide you each and every step of the way. We can make a difference and we can create opportunities for others may you be able to find your passion and god may god help you use your passion to make a difference in this world today thank you for watching i'm your host caroline muche see you next time